If I knew these script writing secrets from day one, my YouTube journey would have been completely different. And after working with a few big YouTubers, I've learned some subtle tricks that can take your attention graphs from this what the hell? to this. But until you learn what the top 1% of YouTubers are doing differently, then you'll be stuck in a cycle of low views and no subscribers. So in this video, I'm going to reveal my three-step process for writing a killer YouTube intro, as well as a simple method for writing my scripts in half the time without losing quality. But first, if you were to start over from scratch, what would be the quickest way to level up your YouTube script writing skills? Well, let me tell you a personal story which will help answer this question. Let's go back to when I was starting out on YouTube. I just dropped out of college and I moved back in with my parents. And I felt like that stereotype typical loser who was chasing his dreams of becoming a YouTuber. My dad would always say, you're wasting your time with this YouTube thing. When is it going to start earning money? And I felt a lot of shame because of this. But looking at my YouTube stats, I was the jack of all trades, master of none. I was pouring my heart into every aspect of the video creation process, thumbnail design, script writing, video editing. But this meant that each video took more than a month to make. And with every upload, I felt like I wasn't making any progress. Turns out that trying to master every aspect of the video creation process was overwhelming, especially video editing. And one day, while editing and thinking of smashing my face through my laptop, I stumbled across a lifeline. Out of the content creation process, I realized that the part that I loved the most was the script writing. So why not become a script writer for other YouTubers? That way I could support myself while doing something that I actually enjoyed. So I did just that and I began my career as a YouTube script writer. But here's where things turned out better than I thought. Since I was focused on one aspect of the video creation process, instead of taking a month to make one video, suddenly I was writing two to three scripts per week, which helped me get good at writing fast. And the best part was that this allowed me to work with some big YouTubers. So I now had access to people who already knew what they were doing, and this allowed me to learn even more. So looking back at my journey, I think that the fastest way to improve your script writing would be to work for other creators. But you might be wondering how to find these jobs in the first place. And the answer to that is to just get good, bro. If your writing sucks, then nobody will hire you. But if I were to use the 80-20 rule to find the single most important part of the script writing process, it would be this, writing a killer YouTube intro. But here's my three-step framework for writing a banger YouTube intro. Starting with step number one. And this step is the most important, but also the most ignored. You could have the most epic video of all time, but if you get this one part wrong, then nobody will watch your video. Which is why step number one to a killer YouTube intro begins before you even write the first line. So imagine YouTube as a big library where each video is a book. Now what makes you pick up a book? It's the title and cover, right? Well, that's exactly how YouTube works. Your title and thumbnail are the video's cover. They are the first point of contact with your audience. So it doesn't matter if you've created the most engaging video. If your title and thumbnail don't grab attention, then your viewers will scroll past without a second thought. And this is where many creators fall short. They spend a lot of time making the video, but rush through the title and thumbnail, treating it like a last second thing. And this is a big mistake. The biggest YouTubers like Mr. Beast have realized the importance of the title and thumbnail. So he always makes them before the actual video. And that's because the title and thumbnail will help you with step two of writing a killer YouTube intro. And this is where things get fun. But if you get this part wrong, then you could lose 80% of your viewers at the snap of a finger. But here's a quick analogy to illustrate this point. Let's say you're on a dating app and someone's profile catches your attention. You start chatting, a connection builds, and now you're excited to meet this person. But when you show up face to face, they're a completely different person. You would feel bamboozled and deceived, right? Well, your title and thumbnail works the same way. They set the expectation. So if you start the video and it's not immediately delivering on that expectation, then your viewers will feel catfished. And this mismatch can lead to a quick drop off in the opening five seconds. So let's look at this video for an example. The video is titled How to Cook Pasta and the thumbnail is a photo of the pasta. Now let's look at the intro for this video. The opening frame is exactly the same as the thumbnail. So people that click on this will probably have their expectations met and will most likely keep watching past the opening five seconds. But you don't need the opening frame to be exactly the same. Look at Ali Abdal, for example. For his video on six side hustles students can start in 2024, here's the opening five seconds of the video. In this video, I want to break down six side hustle ideas for students, although I'm hoping these will apply even if you're not a student. So the opening line should deliver on the title and the opening frame should be as close to the thumbnail as possible. And by doing this, our hook should now be optimized for meeting viewer expectations, which will take us on to step three, the setup. And this part can be broken down even further into three elements. Now, this first element is crucial when you're making an educational video. And as an example, let's go back to the intro of this video. In the second line, I said this, and after working with a few big YouTubers, I've learned some subtle tricks 
Did you catch what I did there? If you didn't, then let me explain. A common objection that your viewers will have is whether you actually know what you're talking about. So you want to build credibility as soon as you can, but you also have to be subtle about it. Your viewers actually don't care about you that much. All they want to know is that they can trust you. So keep your credibility line to one sentence max, which then takes us into element number two, the setup. And I learned this from Ed from Film Booth, so shout out to him. I wish he was joking. We're gonna go back to the title and thumbnail again. This is the last time, I promise. But let's take a look at the video right here. When a viewer sees this on their homepage, what is it that makes them want to click? Well, after seeing this, you might be wondering, what would he do to make $10,000? Could a beginner do this too? What are the common mistakes that will mess up my chances? And is there a step-by-step -step process that I can follow? These are open loop questions that make the viewer curious to watch the video. And you can actually use these questions to write the setup portion of your hook. So after the credibility line, you would do something like this. So in this video, I will reveal what I would do to get to $10,000 a month from scratch, how anyone can do this even with no experience, as well as a common mistake that will ruin your chances of success. See how each of these statements match the open loop questions we went over earlier, which then takes us into element number three for the setup. And I learned this one from Ali Abdal scriptwriter George Blackman, so credit goes to him. But if you're making educational content, your hook needs to include these three things, your target audience, their desired transformation, and what's at stake. But here's an example of a hook. And to make it easier to follow, we will go through and highlight where each of these elements are used. Stop posting YouTube shorts right now because they won't just decrease your views, they'll destroy your entire channel. This first line shows what's at stake for the viewer if they post YouTube shorts. You see, after reaching over 1.2 million subscribers on my main channel and getting over 120 million views through shorts, I've discovered that they've harmed my channel more than they've helped it. This is the credibility line, but it also shows the transformation that the viewer wants. And for the rest of the intro, so today I'm gonna show you how YouTube shorts can negatively impact your channel's growth, examples of big YouTubers that have destroyed their channels with shorts, as well as a clever way to use shorts without harming your channel in the process. I've highlighted where each element is used so you can take a look. But as you can see, every sentence has a purpose. It either mentions the target viewer, shows the transformation, or reveals what's at stake. But that's my epic framework for writing a banger intro. Now I know that this might seem like a lot of information, but if you want a way to write your intros in under three minutes, then I actually have a ChatGPT prompt that I use to get these written fast. Just add your video title and ChatGPT will spit back 12 hooks, five credibility lines, and 10 open loop questions to help you write your intro. So if you want to use it, then check out the link in the description to get it for free. But speaking of speed, there's actually a script writing mistake that many YouTubers make without even realizing it. And this one frustration kills every YouTube script writer's dream. So let me take you back to one day when I was writing a script for a client. So I'm sitting there at my desk, there's trash everywhere, and my Google Doc is completely empty. All I can see is the text cursor blinking, just waiting for me to type something. And I tried everything. I went for a walk, I had a coffee, I even tried taking a cold shower. But then it dawned on me. This wasn't just a rut, I'd been fighting an invisible enemy. And that's when I realized I had writer's block. But how do we actually defeat the pesky writer's block? Well, with the deadline approaching for my client's script, I realized that I needed to get this thing done fast. So I tried something called speed writing. No thoughts, no structured. I just dumped everything I could think of onto the page. And to my surprise, I had the first draft done in under an hour. Now at the time, I didn't know why speed writing worked. I just knew that it did. But it wasn't until months later where I actually understood what was happening. So basically, the human brain takes around 15 minutes to get into a state known as flow state. This is where you're super focused on a single activity. But when writing a YouTube script, there's actually many different tasks that you do. But without realizing it, you might be switching between brainstorming, structuring, and writing. And this can be super overwhelming. But luckily, I learned a trick from George Blackman again. This dude is the GOAT, by the way. Go check him out on Twitter. But anyways, going back to the trick I learned, George calls this the four hat method. And as the name suggests, it's all about wearing one hat at a time, treating each stage of the script writing process as a separate profession. And this approach minimizes task switching, which was a big thing that was killing my productivity. So let's dive into what each hat represents, starting with the artist. This is where your script begins and is basically our brain dump session. But the main thing you want to think about is the one big reason why your viewers are clicking on your video in the first place. This is the video's big payoff. And once this is done, you can move on to becoming the architect. This is where you structure your script. And this stage is all about building the steps that lead to your video's big payoff. So this could be the steps of a tutorial or a new point in a listicle. But each of these points or steps should open new curiosity gaps that serve as mini payoffs on the way to the big payoff. Now, by the end of this stage, you should have a solid blueprint for your script, which takes us on to step three, where you can become the writer. Now, earlier I mentioned speed writing. This is the stage where you would do that. You already have the structure in place, so now you can begin fleshing out the information. Just dump anything that comes to mind and don't worry about any retention tricks or anything like that. That part comes in stage four, when you become the editor. 
So by this point, you should have the first draft written. And now you can focus on polishing the script and scrutinizing every word. You can now think about retention strategies, loops, hooks, progression towards the big payoffs and all that other stuff. Now, I mentioned earlier how I quickly got good at YouTube script writing. There's something else I started doing recently that's taken my skills to the next level. But check out this deep dive where I show you how I mastered YouTube script writing in seven days.